Hey everyone, so welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video, I'm sorry I had a break, and I'm sorry that my background's different. I've been kicked out of my own room, how sad is that? Um, sorry if you find it distracting as well, there are a lot of things in the background. So this video is going to be my foundation routine. I've had quite, I, people ask me a lot what I use for my face, and I'm afraid it is quite a lot of high-end stuff. So um, if they're not within your budget, then please, 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 if you've got any drugstore favourites, let me know down below um, what your favourites are. And I will try them out as well and try to come up with a foundation routine that's a budget one as well. However, if you want to know how exactly I do my foundation and a little bit of contouring as well, then um, please keep on watching. So first I'll just explain a little bit what I've done off camera already. I thought I'd skip this bit because it is a little bit boring just watching me put lots of different moisturisers on my face. So what I did first was I just quickly did, uh, kind of toned my face with my Bioderma just to get any excess oils that are built up after I've washed my face because I do like to faff around a lot um, once I've like washed my face and done my hair and things like that. And then I used this which is the Indeed Labs I think it's called, Peptobrite and I bought this kind of specifically for this video to in, try and improve the tone of my skin. I don't know if it's worked, but I've only been using it for a week and I really like it. It really helps my makeup apply really smooth. I just put it on before I use this, which is the second thing that I thought you wouldn't want to see me slather on my face, which is the Effaclar Duo. And I really like that. That's my third tube of that. And then just two little things as well is the Simple Eye Cream. I'm quite new to this but I really, really like it. It's really helped smooth out anything um, that I've got under eye. No, <laughs> that didn't even make sense. That's really helped smooth out my under eye area. Um, so I'm liking that a lot, that is really good. And it's really cheap as well. It's not even that expensive. I think it's about six pounds. And then just on any blemishes that I've got, which I've got quite a few, please excuse them, is the good thing to stop that spot. So first off, I always prime my skin, always, always, always prime my skin. And for that I use the Illamasqua Hydro Veil. I use that first, once my um, all the moisturisers have sunk in, I leave them for about two minutes and get all my makeup ready. Because I'm a bit weird like that. And then to kind of, to mattify my face through the centre, I use the Benefit Professional Primer. I start off with my, with all my base products quite matte. And then my foundation, as you'll see, is kind of a dewy finish. Not really, because I do mattify it again. But I just want that healthy look to my skin. So, the foundation that I use is a high-end foundation. But I've found that investing in the stuff that I use on my skin um, as a base is, you know, it's just... You just can't go wrong with really investing in products like foundation and concealer. So, for my face, I use... The is kind of you can't even tell what it is anymore because I've had it for that long. It's Skin Base Foundation in shade 3.5, and because I don't know why, I just find that mixing it with the tiniest little bit of Skin Base White really helps. And for the dew finish, because it is a really full on foundation, you can use it on its own, but I like to mix it with the these all look the same, but they're not. The Illamasqua Satin Primer, it's really good. Even though I've got oily skin, the satin primer doesn't make my skin look oily, it just makes it look dewy instead. So I'm just going to mix those together and then start applying them. So like it says in the title, this is Flawless Foundation with one brush. And that is the Illamasqua. I think this is called the blending brush. It's the big blender anyway, the discontinue in it. But you can use the, um, the highlighter brush, it's very similar, it's a little bit bigger than this. But it does the job just as good. And I'm just taking a little bit of that mixture that I've made on the back of my hand. Looks a little bit like that now. I'm just dabbing it on the brush and then dabbing any excess off and starting on the centre of my face. I'm just going to buff that all over. With this foundation, you want to start off with um, a light layer all over. And then build it up. So like here, I don't think it's picking up. I'm trying to kind of see if it is. But here I've got quite a lot of redness and blemishes. So I'll start off with a really light layer all over. And then blend that up. Blend that up. Build that up. 
Also, if you guys have got, because I don't know, I do kind of want to try and use some drugstore concealers, concealers and foundations. If you guys have got any good suggestions, please let me know in the comments down below. Because I know not all of you could afford, I think skin base is £27 and I know that's completely just, you know, not within everyone's budget. And don't forget as well to take it down your neck and a little bit on your ears. Just so you're all matched up. And then any that you've got left over, or this is what I do anyway, any that I've got left over I'll just take it on top of blemishes just because then you've got that thicker layer that makes it kind of easier to blend your concealer into as well. So just pushing it on. Because if you buff it on, you're, more, you're just going to wipe away what you've already got there as well. So then what I also like to do is, in between steps, I like to just spot clean my brush. So I just keep a little um, cotton wool pad with some MAC brush cleanser on it and just push my brush into it a little bit just to make sure that I'm not getting a build up of product on my brush because you are just using one brush obviously. So for concealer I'm just using these two which you've probably seen before if you've been here for a while. They are the OCC Skin Conceal, I think this one appears to be picking, I can never tell which one's which. This one is Y0 I think and this one is Y1 and I just use a mixture of the two and then underneath my eyes I just use Y0 because it's lighter. Um, if you are going to get these, please bear in mind that the packaging is pretty crap. I haven't had these for that long and there you go, perfect example. And look, see the lids crack so easily. You can see my crappy nail varnish. Um, yeah, the going to same brush, got a little bit of both on each and got a little bit of both on it even. And um, I'm just going to push that on like that. And you really do not need much of these either. So the one place that you always want to take your concealer is just around your nose. Um, because you can get a bit of, I get a lot of redness around there. And it just, I don't know how it just wakes up the whole of you. It just makes the whole of your complexion look so much better. So just a tiny bit, buff that in. I kind of, what I do with this brush is I push it on first. And then do little circular motions after just to blend it out a little bit. Kind of a bit like you would eyeshadow, you know, like you push it on first with a flat brush and then blend it out with a fluffier brush. This kind of does the job of both. Bear in mind as well that you don't want to have the same coverage all over your face. So on my forehead I will have less coverage than I do down here, mainly along my jawline as well. Is where that tends is where I tend to flare up the most. So just keep that in mind that you don't want the whole of your face to have the same full coverage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is conceal under my eyes with my Bobbi Brown corrector in light bisque. Kind of, I need to get a new one of these, it's such a mess. It's showing up. And this just corrects any darkness that I've got under my eyes, which I have quite a lot of. And I'm just concentrating that quite down here. And don't forget to get right in the inner corner, like right in the inner corner there as well. If you do get darkness, because you do tend to get some right in the corner of your eye too. And then I'm just taking that lighter concealer shade and just taking that under. Next, I'm going to highlight as well. And for that, this is kind of a bit like highlight contour thing as well, because I do that a lot. I'm using the new um, Skin Base Lift by Illamasqua, and this is called white light. You need the tiniest amount of this and all I do is push it on first. You want to do a triangular shape underneath your eye if you're highlighting like this. Making sure both sides are even. And then I buff it in. I also take a little bit down my nose. A bit here as well. And a little bit just there right on my chin and then I just buff it all in. And after you've highlighted the bits of the face that you want to stand out most then I'm going into contour which will make the bits which will I don't know push back the bits of the face that you want to push back I'm guessing and I'm using Illamasqua concealer in CC320 on the same brush 
and I was stabbing that in and took my hair behind my ear. Just take it from the top of your ear right down and take it all the way back into the hairline as well because then it just looks like you've got that natural shadow as well and then I'm just going to take it along my jawline starting behind my ear and bringing it down and then I'm just taking it onto my temples as well and I'm also contouring my nose just starting it in my eyebrow which is partially why I do my eyebrows after um, because it would rub the end of my eyebrow out and I'm just taking that down my nose just do the other side and then before I'm powdering my face I just like to use this Lush Feeling Younger Skin Tint just on the high points of my cheekbones and I just take a little bit of this out with the end of my brush and I actually use my fingers for this and then blend it in with the brush afterwards um, which isn't cheating because it's not an extra brush it's your fingers so just dab that on I find if you put this stuff on after you've powdered it kind of it it does something really really weird to your powder and then I'm just taking the brush just blending it so that's all the cream products done with if I this and the next thing that I use depends on what I'm doing so if I know that I'm not going to be photographed not that I walk around outside with paparazzi following me or anything but if I know that I'm not going to be taking photos for my blog for something like that or if I know that I'm not going on a night out and there's going to be no flash photography then I do like or if I know that I'm going to be able to powder my face quite a lot because this does not set your makeup that good it gives it a really nice finish on camera though so I will be using this today and it is the Makeup Forever HD powder and these two are translucent so they're not going to um, affect the colour of your makeup. The other one is One Drugstore Winner and this is the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. I absolutely love this. You don't, and this is in transparent, and you only need to powder once and it's just, it, my skin is so oily as well and it just sorts out your skin straight off. It doesn't cake or anything like that, it just gives it a really nice matte finish. But for the sake of the video, because I do like the way this powder makes my skin look on video, I'm going to be using the HD powder. So on that same brush I'm just patting it on. You want to pat your powder on because otherwise you will move the makeup that you've already put on. So now that I'm all powdered I just go back in with a bronzer just to um, kind of warm up my face a little bit and I do it on the same brush as well but with just a little bit broader. You'll see it in a minute. Um, and I'm using the Body Shop Honeycomb I keep calling this honeycomb but I'm pretty sure it's just honey, whatever, it's got a honeycomb print on it and it's the bronzer in shade 1 light matte so it's not got any sparkle in it which is what you want if you're using a bronzer to contour once I've powdered I do like to even out the kind of matte texture of the powder with uh, another cream product and just, I don't know, I've seen um, Goss Makeup Artists do this as well and I'm at the minute I'm using, absolutely loving this, I'm using the Velvet Blusher from Illamasqua called Peaked and it's just, it looks really pale on camera partly because I've dabbed my brush in it so many times but it's just this really nice dusky pinky colour that just looks really natural and concentrating that there, just above my contour but below where I've put the highlighter and then I'll just put some eyebrows on and I'll be back so then guys I'm back uh, because I couldn't stand myself without eyebrows any longer um, here's the finished look I hope you found this helpful um, I know a lot of people have asked me to do something like this before and I did a pictorial but obviously that's changed because quite a lot of steps have come out of that so yeah if you found this tutorial helpful then please give it a thumbs up if, um, if you're not subscribed already then please subscribe um, it's free and you'll know when I put up um, my new video but I try to do Monday and Friday but it often ends up being Tuesday and Saturday which is why I need to stay subscribed um, you can also find me on Twitter Facebook and Instagram they're all fees makeup tips I will hopefully see you on Friday bye